My name is Kelly Dean Wiseman. I'm the general manager of the Community Food Co-op in Bozeman, Montana. We have two stores. Our annual sales are about $20 million. And we got the ugly news a few years ago that Lucky's Market was going to come to our, our area and they were going to be about 10 blocks down the street from us, which was a huge deal to us because we've already been through a uh, major competition before. When a new store opened up uh, about a mile and a half away, our sales went down about uh, oh, 15% and we eventually had to lay off 29 workers. So it was a matter of uh, major import to us that this was happening and we treated it as uh, an all hands on deck emergency. So the first thing we did, we decided uh, first we need to know who Lucky's was. So we sent some people down to Boulder, Colorado and they toured the store and, uh, and then we perused their sales uh, flyer in our management team meetings, looked at photos of their store, and got a sense on what these folks were all about and what they were going to try and do in our, in our town uh, a short 10 blocks away, right down Main Street from us. So the next step in preparing for that was to first and foremost make the admission that we were going to lose a lot of people. Customers were going to go to Lucky's. Even though the board of directors and the managers in, in our organization are core shoppers and shop 100% or close to that in our store, we have to admit that a lot of our folks uh, are not that loyal to us and will jump ship. So we decided to do a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats of Lucky's as a management team. Then we had each manager do a SWOT analysis of their own department. That prepared them to um, basically face the competition that was coming down the street in very minute detail. Then each manager had to present their SWOT analysis to the entire team, where we tried our very dead level best to tear it to shreds and find more weaknesses, for example, in the produce department or the meat department than the manager was even seeing uh, themselves. Right? The next step was then to decide uh, implementation both in the store and out. And what I mean by in the store is every single department we looked for any opportunity we could find to polish our show. So we took a look at everything from how the produce department looked and the walls, the lighting, we redid all the artwork above the produce. We decided to look at signs, but not just the signs, but the backs of signs. So in our store now, if you can, you can look at a, store, at a sign, but if you walk around the back side of it, you'll see an amazing image of brightly colored food on the back side. We tried to look at, from every angle in the operation, what did we possibly do to make it sharper? Every level of, of excellence we could think of. So everything from bulk uh, signage templates to the signage in, well, in every department, produce, etc., to buying more uh, dry bins in the produce department and expanding it, uh, improved lighting. Uh, we looked at even um, doing cabinetry work for scuff marks and chips in the check stands. We looked everywhere in the store for anything that might look decaying or frumpy, and the rule was no frump, no frumpy. We have to get that out of here. This place has to shine. It can't be an old, stodgy-looking co-op anymore because the new cats are coming to town. Then we looked at from a marketing standpoint, what we could do to steal the thunder from Lucky's before they arrived. What is it that they do? And we learned that a lot of these chains, they do loss leaders on produce and loss leaders in meat department. They run very low margins in what are called the perimeter departments. So we decided to do that. And we uh, lowered our produce margin from 34 to 29, making it one of the lower produce margins in the country. But we didn't drop the prices across the board we chose specific items to run at a very low margin for two week period to match the co plus A and B periods. We did the same in the meat department. We lowered their margin goal down to 22. The idea being nobody's going to come into our town and beat us on organic veggie pricing and organic, organic fruit and meat. So the, the idea was then to create a sales flyer that would, we would use in the store along with our uh, co-op uh, basics flyer that we are rather co-op advantage flyer that we get from the NCG. We did our own flyer that has NCG items on the back but the front is all of the the perimeter department stuff. The loss leaders in meat, the loss leaders in produce. 
those became wildly popular. We didn't mail them out because we didn't feel we had a need to. Instead, we put them in every cart and every basket. And we try to keep them in every cart and every basket every day. The next thing we decided to do was to give membership a little more um, value. So we created a member coupon program. And the member coupon program is people go and they online, they sign up for our Foodie News, uh, which is emailed to them every Wednesday morning. And they get a different coupon every week. Some of the coupons are like the one that's uh, starting tomorrow is uh, $12 off if you buy $90 worth of food. So some of them are big. We try to make all the deals uh, over 10%. Sometimes we'll do $2 off bulk. Sometimes it's a, a couple of dollars off uh, any $15 or more purchase of spirits, beer, wine. But sometimes it's big basket shopping. And so uh, people can come in and just show their cell phone, show the coupon on their phone, and boom, they get $12 off the $90 they purchase. We, this is a member-only program, and it's become very, very popular. We have a lot of people using it. And the idea was to generate some excitement on the part of the membership before Lucky's even showed up in town to have the store look as bright as possible before Lucky's came to town, to have everybody operating on, on all cylinders feeling like this is an actual emergency. And, and it is. And so it, it involves investment in equipment, it involves a lot of investment in marketing, and it involves really a lot of people committing to, to excellence. And that's the point that um, I think really has stuck with our management team the most because Lucky's decided not to open a store here. They pulled out for whatever reason. But we always operate on the assumption that Lucky's is coming. We, we operate on the assumption that Whole Foods is going to open a store 10 blocks away. That has to be the driver for our customer service training. It has to be the driver every day, all the time, is everybody has to think like an entrepreneur. And anybody that's getting complacent, if their department is looking the slightest bit sloppy, or their signage is starting to get a little bit weak, or the service isn't stellar at the front end, it's a, it's a matter of major import in our organization because they are coming. And for us, learning what they do, taking some of the best ideas that they do, some of the uh, loss leader ideas, low margin ideas in some of the perimeters, that may not work in your co-op, but it worked great in our co-op. And so far since we've done this, our, our big store is, uh, is experiencing double digit growth. And we feel like uh, we're in a position, so if Lucky's or Sprouts or natural grocers or somebody does arrive, it won't burst our bubble and it won't hurt us quite as badly. Anyway, something to think about. It's what we did in Bozo.